Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another live stream that uh, we're doing regarding the readings for Eclipse Comics. We're going to continue the readings we did for the coup d'etat, the assassination of JFK trading cards. Now, what we did was uh, I already did the intro for this uh, card set. We do have a playlist on sensor too. all the videos have been loaded on BitChute, rumble and odyssey as well so you can follow the work on these platforms the playlist is on uh sensor and i'll provide the link in the description of this video so we did a little intro regarding these cards where they're from when they're from from 1990 eclipse comics and we talked a little bit about it and we read cards number one to twelve and we did the reading for this in um february 2022 okay february 26 i believe 2022 and right now we're in january 8 2023 so it was uh you know 10 10 and a half months ago okay uh or 11 months ago where we did the reading for the cards and apologies for being late on continuing the reading but what happened was when we did the reading i loved like i didn't know they were as amazing as they were right because we had done the reading for the drug war trading cards um and we do have a playlist on these ones right so we did the reading full reading for the drug war trading cards and they were absolutely amazing amazing history and you can find the playlist on sensor tube as well for the drug war trading cards and uh, the videos will be available on bitshoot as well for sure okay we're going to do readings for some of the other decks we've come across as well which is going to be the rotten to the core uh trading cards the best and worst of new york city politics and it contains a donald trump and rudy chumi on it uh rookie cards and we're going to do the iran contra i'm looking forward to this one because i knew a fair bit about it and it's incredibly important right but what i ended up doing uh since we did the reading uh started the reading you know 11 months ago on the set i picked up another set and this set is the revised version okay which is pretty cool when i bought it initially i didn't realize it was a revised version and then when i got it i compared it to this i went hey wait a second what is what is this and the way it works is this original set was released in 1990 okay and then uh, oliver stone put out the jfk movie in 1991 and the group behind creating this trading card set revised the set and released a revised version in 1992 so this guy came out in 1992 because JFK uh, Oliver Stone had done a lot of research uh, for the JFK movie so it blew a lot of people out of the water that you know they were very well versed in what took place uh, and what most likely happened with the JFK assassination and Oliver Stone with all that research he included a lot of that information in the movie so the creators of this card set went back and revised a little bit of it okay and we're gonna what we're gonna do we're gonna flip through the first 12 cars that we did the reading for and i found one of the cars well they added a little bit more information they also went through with the revised version and break broke up the paragraphs differently a little bit okay and what we're gonna do we're gonna start reading the cards in full in their entirety starting with number 13 and we're going to do the next 12 readings of this set and keep in mind we're in 2023 right now right and a few weeks ago uh more information was released regarding classified information was released regarding the assassination of jfk right and it pretty much came out that all the conspiracy theories were correct conspiracy theories spoilers for what's really going on in the world really in regards to politics economics geopolitics and it's come out now that the cia assassinated jfk so if eclipse comics was still around they went bankrupt in 1995 and um what do you call it todd mcfarland ended up buying uh their inventory uh 
they bought uh, I think he spent twenty five thousand dollars or fifty thousand dollars I think it was twenty five thousand dollars and bought everything that uh, Eclipse Comics comics um, uh, you know the bankrupt company right and if these things were still in print print there would be a third version here that would be released most likely this year with the information uh, whatever that wasn't redacted with the new information uh, confirming that the CIA assassinated JFK okay so that's our little intro regarding this if you want the full intro of what these cards are who Eclipse comics are you want to see the original uh, the first video we put out for this what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna take a look I'm gonna keep these separate uh, because I just want to show you that the revised version is a little different than the original version okay take a look at this thing let's line these up like this we're all symmetrical okay now here's the little insert that they include okay so this is the original version this is the revised version okay now I flip through this everything is the same except this revised version has this little bit of extra in the bottom here right now I can't show you both at the same same time but this thing ends at right here let's see what the first paragraph was most illuminating and we read this in the first video right so we're gonna pick up from here was most illuminating let's see if we can get this thing focused the print is a little bit there we go so it ended there and this little bit is the addition that they did for the insert so let's read this further theories on the JFK assassination have been developed by author L Fletcher Prout Protley, Proty, and by film director Oliver Stone and screenwriter Zach Sklar. Call the White House at 202-456-1111 and tell the president to resent executive order 111652 and unseal the records. Now remember, this came out in 1992. This is 1992 right so 1992 2002 2012 2022 30 years later 30 years later 30 years later we get another dump of the JFK assassination documents that the United States government has right 30 years later okay revealing that the CIA assassinated JFK now in the back is a little different too but it's not really related to the jfk stuff uh pretty cool and we'll see this when we read some of the other sets okay and let's flip through these okay now you can't really let me see if you can see the tones in here this set let's see if you can see the tones really don't come out that well but here's card number one and the the original set is whiter the color of the paper is whiter than this one so this is in better condition okay so if you look at this I went through these and they're the same okay card number one is the same okay card number two was the same nothing that I could see difference of okay. here's card number two and these guys were the same some paragraph breaks are different and stuff on some of the cards but this one card number three let me bring all these out let me bring all these out it's easier to pull them out of the box i don't want to mix them i really don't want these to be mixed up at all okay this is card number three the the artwork is the same however the writing is a little different on this one okay take a look there's a little bit of addition added here so what we're gonna do 
is and it's hard to tell which parts have been um, added and taken out so what we're gonna do we're gonna read card number three okay this whole card of the revised version so this let me bring this out again okay just so you know this is the original version this is the revised version uh best evidence and that's one thing that happened with the oliver stone uh, movie and the information that was released regarding the assassination because oliver stone released some information regarding the autopsy that wasn't available before so this drawing let me see if, let's see if all the drawings are the same the artwork is the same that's cool maybe they're right up on the bottom i didn't check that the writing seems to be the same right but what we're going to do we're going to read the revised version of the autopsy because this is incredibly important right so this is from 1992 revised version of uh, the coup d'etat assassination of jfk trading cards right we already read we already took a look at the the artwork a sort of a, a storyboard of what took place let's read the background the autopsy card number three okay lyndon johnson would not leave dallas without the president's widow who in turn refused to depart without her husband's body so the autopsy was performed at beth bethas that naval hospital claims that the body was altered between parkland and beth bethas that persist due to in incompatible description of the president's wounds and because the uh, ornate pre ornate ornate or ornate ornate presidential casket was left unguarded on air force uh, air force one during its delayed takeoff while johnson on his own orders was sworn in as president the pro uh, premise uh, of tampering with reinforced was reinforced by naval officers claim that kennedy's body appeared at bethesda in body bag inside a cheap tin casket prior to the arrival of the official uh, entourage the autopsy was performed by commander james humes and two other naval doctors none of them forensic pathologists parkland found a three inch exit hole in the back of the head indicating a frontal shot whom's whom's whose first observation according to to fbi agent was that there had been surgery of the head area quote surgery of the head area end quote described the head wound as a gaping hole towards the right front as from a rear shot parkland saw a back wound below the right shoulder Humes located it in the neck. Parkland saw an entrance wound in the throat. Humes called it a uh, trichotomy. Tri After being told of his mistake the next day and without having followed the path of the bullet through the neck on orders from an unnamed general, Humes concluded this bullet had exited from the throat he then uh, burnt his primary autopsy notes his findings along with a bullet found on a stretcher at parkland gave rise to the warren commission's magic quote magic bullet theory end quote but in 1992 former parkland doctor charles crenshaw broke 29 years of silence stating he had observed that kennedy was shot from the front okay and this part here coup d'etat trading cards revised second edition text copyright 1990 1992 
Paul Brancato, Art, Copyright 1990-1992, Bill Sinkowski, Phenomenal Lighter, <laughs> the raw artist, by the way, Bill was. Uh, and Eclipse Entertainment, Eclipse Entertainment, P.O. Box 1099, Forestville, California, 95436. And here's the copyright for the 1990 version so here's the original version and you can see the paper on this is whiter right so the first version came out in 1990 the second version revised version after the uh, Oliver Stone movie and the documents that were released came out in 1992 very cool very cool okay let's continue looking at the next car so this is not card number four and again everything seems to be the same with card number four card number five and we've read all these before so i'm going to zoom through these that way we can confirm that everything was the same right And if I miss anything, we can definitely go back and read the revised versions of these. This is card number six. As a collector, this is pretty important to do. Uh, there might be one or two sentences of word that have been words that have been altered here. Uh, but this is card number seven ruby kills oswald this is looks the same right here's card number eight the same yeah here's card number nine let's check it out that looks the same as well right card number nine the artwork is brilliant absolutely brilliant right the patsy lee harvey oswald here's card number 10 again looks the same a little bit addition here or something taken out see the first paragraph it could just be the text size that it just goes up longer right but looks about the same oh card number texas book repository let's check it out someone uh platonic for us is mentioning crossfire snipers card number four we know a card number three we read the card number three and let's see card number four i'm just going to check card number four again might as well be pretty hardcore about this because it is important about the same shifted a little bit but it could be the, the font size that they used I'm mainly looking at uh, the beginning of paragraphs and the ends of paragraphs and uh, if uh, if they end with the same words CIA KGB oh my oh my 
This is card number 11. Let's see, card number 11. This one uh, is, they broke the paragraph different. Uh, so they broke the original paragraph. If you see this, let's see if it'll focus. Because I took a look at this earlier. Come on, focus. There you go. So if you look at this one, they just broke the paragraph right there. So it ends the same domestic intelligence, and then they broke it into a different paragraph in June 1962. Right? And then it ends with notice, and then it starts with January, ends with killer. So it was just broken differently. Control Agent 1. Right? And the artwork uh, hasn't changed from the 12 that I checked anyway. Here's number 12. Right? And that looks to be the same as well. The autopsy was, if I remember correctly, the autopsy was a huge deal, huge deal. The information that came out, right? Uh, I saw the movie when it first came out as well in the theaters. Uh, it was a big deal, gang. It was a very big deal. And it still is a big deal. Uh, this was a coup d'etat, as the cards indicate. And remember, it took a comic book company, independent comic book company, in 1990, to release information that the corporate media would not release. Okay, extrapolate that to the present. Just imagine how much information corporate media is not releasing, not revealing, and how much of a stenographers they are to centralize power. Unbelievable. CIA assassinating JFK the president, the most beloved president in the United States history. And it's a comic book company that released as much information as they could. And they went back and revised what they had released two years earlier right, to include the information. That's the dedication that we need in our societies. Right. So I want to keep these separate. I'm going to put these here because I want to make sure from now on when we're going to read these cards, the next the next 12, right? I want to make sure that we're going to include whatever that was revised as well. Okay. So what we got here i'm pretty sure all these cards are in order as well okay. open them up just like cards right just like cards because they are we're playing cards i should say right so we're going to take card number 13. we're going to take card number 13. okay now these again are the JFK coup d'etat trading cards. Oh, one other thing I wanted to show you as well. Check this out. Here. I'm going to show you the box as well. Because the box, which I forgot to show you, check it out. If you look at the box, right? The only thing that's different between these is the revised version. So the revised version is at the bottom here. Okay, so the original version, the address is the same, everything's the same. The only difference is the original version is 895 US, 1095 Canadian for the card, and the revised version is 995 US, 1195 Canadian. The side art is the same. The copyright didn't change either, so they forgot to change the copyright at the uh, 1992 copyright on it. Okay, 
they just says 1990. They change them on the cards and the back of the the things was nothing different. Okay. So the only difference on the card on the revised it's just a revised version and the cost of the cards. Okay. And the insert, the insert's different, right? So let's take a look at card number 13 okay control agent 2 right we'll take a look at the art and then we'll take a look at 544 i'm assuming that would be avenue and camp street right so this is control agent number two and we saw control agent number one in the first 12. Look at the road in the background there. Eh? Zigzag. So many turns in the in the path they chose, right? Crazy. Beautiful. Same as the revised version, but let's take a look at. The text. This is card number 13. Guy Bannister. And it looks like the text has changed a little bit. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to read the revised version, gang. Do we agree? I have, uh, we're, since we're live streaming this, I have the chat going on right now. I just want to make sure everyone agrees that we should read the revised version because it's two years later after Oliver Stone put out the information. Let's see, is there a lot of difference on it? Yeah, the paragraphs. Oh, wait a second. It doesn't look like the paragraph changed. It just decided to break it differently. You take a look at this one. It says, distribution in latin america take a look at this one distribution in latin america and then was the sentence there was oswald really pro castro or was he an agent provocateur and that's where the paragraph starts right and then they broke the paragraph here guy bannister and then they start there guy bannister it ends with cuba committee ends with cuba committee so we can read the original version of this okay let's read the original version okay. card number 13 guy bannister in april 1963 oswald began a bewildering five month stay in the city of his youth new orleans there he started and was the, uh, started and was the only member of a chapter of the pro castro fair play for cuba committee fpcc and began passing out leaflet leaflets at various locations in on august 9th he was arrested after street scuffle with an anti-castro activist carlos bring bring a week later oswald and bring were joined in a radio debate by Ed Butler, director of the CIA-backed Information Council of the Americas. Butler exposed Oswald's Sylvia, uh, Sylvia defection, exposed is in quotes, defection, smeared the FPCC as a Kremlin front and made a quote, truth tape, end quote, of the debate for distribution in Latin America. Was Oswald really pro Castro or was he an agent provocateur? One clue is the address stamped on the back of some of the some of Oswald's FPCC material. 544 Camp Street, Camp Street. Other tenants recall Oswald working in an office on the second floor. 
Not only was this the former headquarters of the Cuban Revolutionary Council, a CIA-created government in exile which, with which Bringuayer was involved, it was the address of Guy Bannister Associates, a private detective agency fronting for the CIA's anti-Castro activists in New Orleans. Guy Bannister, former head of the FBI's Chicago office, with ties to naval intelligence dating back to World War II, was a member of the John Birch Society and the Parliamentary Minutemen. Paramil paramilitary Minutemen and published racist materials. Although his files were confiscated shortly after his 1964 death, index cards were found revealing that the subjects of the files included ammunitions, ammunition and arms, the CIA, anti-Soviet underground, the ci civil rights program of Kennedy, the International Trade Mart, and the Fair Play for Cuba Committee. Wow. It was just a farce. It was just a play, right? It was all set up. Control agent number two, and his name was Guy Bannister. Very cool. Very cool. Card number 14, revised edition, original edition. Let's take a look at the artwork and then we'll look at the text to see if there's anything different between them. Misguided pilot. Who is this? misguided pilot look at those eyebrows Wah. this stream we're going to be posting on Someone asking a question where are we gonna post this on the live chat. Which this stream we're gonna post on Bitchute Rumble Odyssey as well as the full stream on Sensor 2. Let's take a look at this. It looks like the paragraphs were broken in different places, maybe. Just wanna make sure. It's just a paragraph. So the last word is disappeared, later disappeared. So that seems to be the same. Uh, that, that Oswald and Ferry, that's the last paragraph. They start with the same words. Uh, activity was in effect. Activity was in effect. The second last paragraph. Mm, let's see where this was broken. So this one breaks at eyebrows and toupee. You got eyebrows and toupee right there. And he worked closely with Bannister, worked closely with Guy Bannister. It looks like the revised version is a little different. Time leading CIA raid. You know what we're going to do for this one? We're going to read the revised version. Okay. So this is card number 14 because they worded a little different so they must have corrected something right misguided pilot and his name is david ferry card number 14. Okay. the strange uh strangest denizen of five 544 camp street was former eastern airlines pilot david ferry who as a contract employee of the cia 
flew dozens of clandestine missions to Cuba around the time of, of the 1961 Bay of Pigs invasion. A bishop, a bishop in an obscure sect called the Orthodox Old Catholic Church of North America and a master hypnotist, Ferry suf suffered from a rare condition of hair hairlessness called alopecia, for which he compensated with grotesquely false eyebrows and toupee. Ferry worked closely with Guy Bannister's anti-Castro operations, one time leading a CIA stage raid. They had the key on a bunker containing explosives allegedly given to Schlumberger Corporate Schlumberger Schlumberger Corporation by the CIA from the ultra right French secret army organization OAS to use in the 1962 coup attempted against French President Charles de Gaulle. The raid allegedly enabled the CIA to supply Cuban exile terrorists while President Kennedy's ban on such activities was in effect. That Oswald and Ferry knew each other is certain. When Lee was 16, he joined the local Civil Air Patrol unit led by Captain Ferry, who was discharged from Eastern because of uh, his homosexual liaisons with teenage boys. In September 1963, they were seen together at a federally supported black voter registration drive in Clinton, Louisiana. The evening of Kennedy's death, Ferry drove through a thunderstorm to Houston, where he spent hours at a skating rink making and receiving phone calls. According to a friend, he was to have picked up two members of a hit team who never showed up. The FBI questioned Ferry a few days later, but the interview was first classified by J. Edgar Hoover and later disappeared. Wow, wow, wow. I wonder this, if this interview was released in uh, 2022, uh, a few months ago with the information. And one of the things I found interesting, Schlumberger Corporation, because of my geophysics work, I've uh, used a lot of their equipment and I know Schlumberger uh, quite well. In the 1990s, uh, Schlumberger is involved in exploration, uh, both oil, mining, and whatnot. So they provide a lot of geotechnical uh, instruments. So interesting that uh, they were involved in this whole Shippa, uh thing as well. Look at those eyebrows. Wow, wow, wow. Misguided pilot. Misguided pilots. The next card. Card number 15. Okay. Original version. Revised version. The mysterious traveler with the red bag. The mysterious traveler. Look at that Hawaiian shirt. Mysterious Traveler, card number 15, Oswald in Mexico. Oswald in Mexico. Let's see if the text has changed with these. Let's check it out. That seems to be the same. The paragraph seems to be the same. They broke up the paragraph here again. Down here, the purpose of Oswald's trip the purpose of Oswald's trip and it ended with imposters were made public imposters were made public ends with Mexico City so these seem to be the same okay so we're gonna read the original version Let me put card number 15 back. 
So this is Oswald in Mexico, the mysterious traveler. Oswald left New Orleans on September 26, 1963, and traveled by bus to Mexico City. Passengers remember the man who said he was going to Havana was quite open about his leftist beliefs and conversed with an older man who spoke with an English accent. The latter was identified by the FBI as Albert Osborne, alias John Bowman. FBI records from 1942 describe Osborne as a fervent Nazi supporter, a member of the fanatical anti-communist American Council of Christian Churches. He ran a missionary school for orphans in Puebla, Mexico, that allegedly served as a cover for training marksmen. Oswald registered at a Mexico City hotel frequented by anti-Castro Cuban exiles, but his activities over the next few days are cloudy. The CIA later reported that Oswald visited the Cuban and Soviet embassies seeking a Cuban visa. CIA surveillance photos and tapes from bugs inside the embassies were sent to the FBI on the evening of November 22nd. They were of, they were of someone else still un unidentified and the CIA has never released any photos or tapes of the real Oswald at either embassy though 12 pictures of the imposter were made public. The purpose of Oswald's trip to Mexico City may have been revealed by the CIA in a memo sent to the FBI 10 days before he left. It read, quote, the CIA is giving some consideration to countering the activities of the Fair Play for Cuba Committee in foreign countries. CIA is also giving some thought to planting deceptive information which might embarrass the committee in areas where it does have some support." End quote. The House Select Committee on Assassination sealed for 50 years its 265-page report entitled, quote, Lee Halsby, Hall, Harvey Oswald, the CIA, and Mexico City, end quote. I wonder if this was released in the 2022 uh, release of the assassination documents. Oswald in Mexico, the mysterious traveler. Right? mysterious traveler card number 16 okay. original revised the artwork is the same let's take a look at the artwork Duplganger in Dallas Duplganger Duplganger in Dallas <laughs> Look at that face. What looks like Trudeau? Trudeau's black face. Who is that? Is that supposed to be Oswald? There's three faces here. There's one face here, one face here, another face there. Look at that. Beautiful artwork. I wonder who has the originals of these. Let's look at the text. Let's look at the text. Too many Oswalds. That's what it's called. Let's see. Are they the same? They look the same. Yeah, they look the same. So we read the original. Card number 16, too many Oswalds. While Oswald was supposedly en route to Mexico, a strange incident occurred at the Dallas home of Cuban exile, Silvia Odio. She was visited by three anti-Castro activists, two Latin men 
and an American introduced as Leon Oswald. A few days later, one of the Latins told her over the telephone that Leon Oswald thought the Cubans had no guts and should shoot President Kennedy. When Miss Odio saw pictures of Lee Oswald after the assassination, she was sure he had been one of his, her visitors. Though Odio was too scared to report the incident, a friend who told Od Odio's story to the FBI also claimed that Oswald had been seen at, at two Cuban exile meetings that were ad addressed by General Edwin Walker. An Oswald quote, double was clearly at work in Dallas during the seven weeks Oswald lived there prior to the assassination. On November 23rd, the FBI received a report that quote, Lee Oswald end quote, test drove a car two weeks earlier, speeding the demo at 80 miles per hour, claiming he would have, quote, a lot of money in the next two or three weeks, end quote, and mumbling something about, quote, going back to Russia where they treat workers like men, end quote. The, Lee, the real Lee Oswald did not know how to drive. On November 24th, Dallas police found a gun shop receipt in Oswald's name for mounting a telescope site on a Manilicher Carnero rifle. Oswald's had come Oswald's had come with a sight. A day after having retrieved the rifle, Oswald, in quotes, had gone to a firing range and drawn attention to himself with obnoxious behavior. A month earlier he was seen firing a rifle on private property in the company of two other men, one of whom was, quote, Latin, perhaps Cuban, end quote. The landowner gave a shell to the FBI, who later said it had not been fired from Oswald's rifle. Wow. Oh, wow. 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 Card number seventeen. The other widow. Hmm. Let's take a look at the artwork. Let's take a look at the artwork. The other widow. is the same marina marina oswald let's see that paragraph starts the same oswald and then they break the paragraph. Let me show you. So this one breaks, starts the paragraph. While Payne and her testimony ended with against Oswald. And then there it is, against Oswald. And while Payne and her temporary. So it just looks like they added a paragraph break. And the text seems to be the same. Okay. So we're going to read the original. Card number 17. 
the other widow, Marina Oswald. After Oswald's arrest, his Russian-born wife, Marina, was quoted as saying, quote, Lee, good man, Lee, not shoot anyone, end quote. For the next few months, she was held in protective custody, quotes, in quotes, at the Inn of the Six Flags Motel and questioned by agents of the Secret Service, the FBI, and the Great Southwest uh, Corporation, owners of the motel, two of whose employees later became her legal representatives. Despite the fact that Marina, quote, lied repeatedly, end quote, to her captors, her testimony that Oswald owned and practiced with a rifle and had previously tried to kill General Edwin Walker was used to butcher but the case, but but buttress the case against him. Reinforcing her testimony was that of Mi Mrs. Ruth Payne, with whom Marina had stayed for two months prior to the assassination. In addition to confirming Marina's story, Payne cooperated with James Host Hosty, the agent who had charge of Oswald's FBI file. Hosty had interviewed Payne and Marina twice prior to November 22nd, and Payne later provided him with evidence against Oswald. While Payne and her temporary estranged husband, Michael, were self-professed liberals, his family, with whom she had, she had, she spent two months prior to harboring Marina, had intelligence connections. Three close relatives were directors of the CIA-connected United Fruit Company. Wow! His great-grandfather founded Bell Telephone, and he himself had a top security clearance at Bell Helicopter. It was Ruth Payne who found Lee Oswald a job at the Texas School Book Depository. Today, Marina states that the threats of deportation were used to compel her testimony, that her husband was a federal agent who adored, in quotes, Kennedy, that someone impersonated Lee to incriminate him, and that he was killed to silence him. Wow. Wow. The other widow. So other than Jackie Onassis, eh? Or Jackie Kennedy. The other widow that no one really talks about. I never thought about her as the other widow. Incredible. That is correct. That is correct. Marina Oswald. Wow. Card number 18. Original, released in 1990. Revised, released in 1992 after Oliver Stone's JFK movie. Let's take a look at the artwork. FBI shadows, FBI shadows. Oh, that says FBI, very cool art. FBI, very cool art. Whose picture is that? Or whose portrait is that? FBI shadows. Let's take a look. James Hosty. Hosty. Let's see if the text has changed relative to the revised version. Let's take a look at this. So it starts off the same, and then there's a paragraph break. Suspicious Soviet and starts with FBI's links 
There it is there. So they broke the paragraph there. Suspicious Soviets, FBI links. Okay. Paragraph ends with division five, same as here. An hour after, yeah, same. You got the dots and ends with the same. They just did a paragraph here. In 1975, they broke the paragraph there. Okay. Informant 179. Cool. So we can read the original. Okay. So FBI shadows. James Hosty. The FBI's interest in Oswald had begun in June 1960. While he was in the Soviet Union, when a memo from the FBI to the State Department warned of the quote possibility that an imposter is using Oswald's birth certificate, end quote. His mother told the FBI he had taken it with him, but he returned without it, and the document has never surfaced. When questioned by, by Fort Worth FBI agent Fain, Oswald offered to report any con contacts with suspicious Soviets the FBI's links to Oswald continued in New Orleans, where, at his own request, he was interviewed by Agent Quigley while under arrest from the while under arrest from the street scuffle with Cuban exile Carlos Bring, Bringuire. Bringuire. He was released shortly after paying a ten-dollar fine. Guy Barrister with whom Oswald worked, was an ex-FBI agent said by some to have been secretly working for the FBI's counterintelligence intelligence division five. An hour after Oswald's arrest, James Hosty, the Dallas FBI agent who monitored local Cuban exile activities, burst into police headquarters with the news that Oswald was a, quote, communist capable of committing the assassination end quote though hostly knew where oswald worked he had not warned the secret service or dallas police of the presence of this dangerous in quotes man along the motorcade route strangely host hostie's name and phone number were found in oswald's address book texas justice officials alleged to the Warren Commission that the FBI paid Oswald $200 a month for over a year as, quote, confidential informant 179, end quote. In 1975, Hostie said Oswald had brought a note to his office weeks before the assassination asking him to leave Marina alone, but on the order of his superior, Gordon Shanklin, he had, on orders of a superior, Gordon Shanklin, he had destroyed it immediately after Oswald's death. Wow. Just the cover up is insane. The cover up is insane. So the FBI and CIA deep into the assassination of JFK. Card number 19. Original version from 1990, revised version from 1992. We'll take a look at the text after we look at the artwork. Cuba. Is that an equal sign equal Oswald's Oswald won Kennedy lost Texas uber uber ales owls what uber Is that 
Alpha 66, the license plate. I remember Oswald couldn't drive. Texas Uber Ales, Uber Alls. Let's check this out. Oh, we're gonna check out the text, make sure the text is the same. If there's any additions here. So starts off the same. There's a paragraph break here. Walker was visited at University of Mississippi. So University of Mississippi and then breaks with Walker visited. So that seems to be the same. And then Walker, Walker network ends with the same. Good, good. New Orleans. Okay, cool. So the text seems to be the same, so we're going to read the original. Card number 19, General Edwin Walker. The, quote, wanted for treason, end quote, leaflets posted in Dallas on November 21st, 1963, were produced by an aide to retired General Edwin Walker, who had been removed from command of the Army's 24th Division in Munich in 1961 for indoctrinating his troops with fascist propaganda. In 1962, he was arrested and held in, in a mental hospital on orders from Gen Attorney General Robert Kennedy for leading a violent mob that tried to keep black student student james meredith from enrolling at the university of mississippi walker was visited several times in 1962-63 by jack ruby he was a leader of the john burst society of the minutemen a paramilitary group that armed and trained anti-castro cubans two of his cuban contacts were carlos bringuire a fellow director of the Christian Anti-Communist Youth University, and Philip Vidal, a member of the Anti-Castro terrorist group, Alpha 66, who later worked in Oliver North's illegal contra aid network. Oh my God, Walker! What Walker was on a flight from New Orleans to Dallas when kennedy's death was announced he told fellow passengers they were his they were his alibi the next day he phoned a neo-nazi newspaper in munich to report that oswald had tried to kill him the previous april predating marina's mention of this by 10 days later he posted a sign by his house reading quote cuba Oswald won, Kennedy lost, end quote. There is no hard evidence that Oswald shot at Walker, but his name and number were in Oswald's address book, and Oswald had a photo of his house in which appears a 1957 Chevy, possibly Philippe Va Felipe Vandals. A further link between the two is a roll of film shot in 1963 by an acquaintance of Walker showing the general in his Dallas home and Oswald handing out pro Castro leaflets in New Orleans. Wow. That's the sign. Cuba. Oswald won. Kennedy lost. Oh, someone in our chat mentioned uh, what this means. Texas Uber Ales and is German for Texas above all, referring to the former German national anthem, Deutschland Uber Ales, Germany above all, by linguist and poet August van Flerzer Lurbrand. Wow! <laughs> wow! Thank you, Platonic Pluris, for looking into that. Wow. Wow.
Card number 20. Card number 20. Wow, look at this artwork. Look at this artwork. The Permendix plot. Look at this. Just beautiful. Wow, I wonder where all these original art pieces are. I would pay an arm and a leg for these. Wow. Not an arm and a leg, but I would pay a pretty hefty price for these. Look at this. Beautiful. Beautiful. Let's see what the text, if the text has changed or not. Oh, somebody's doing yard work. Let's check it out. 1967 starts the same. We got a break here. Shaw was director and linked to CIA. Let's see if we can find that. This looks different. This looks different, gang. We're gonna read the revised version. Even ends differently. Okay, gang. We're gonna read the revised version because it's more up to date. Okay. Because this is about information. We wanna learn as much as we can, right? So we go with the revised version. Card number 20. The Clay Shaw. Or not the Clay Shaw, or Clay Shaw. Right? The Pen Permindex plot. Clay Shaw. In 1967, New Orleans District Attorney Jim Garrison arrested New Orleans businessman Clay Shaw for conspiring with Oswald and the recently deceased David Ferry to kill J. John, Ken John Kennedy. The ensuing scandal laid bare Shaw's close, closest closeted homosexuality, but although Garrison convinced the jury that Kennedy was the victim of a conspiracy he failed to prove that Shaw was involved with Oswald or Ferry or that he was linked to the CIA Shaw was director of New Orleans's International Trade Mart a subsidiary of the Rome-based Central Mondale uh, Commer Commercial CMC was in turn linked to Perman Permandex, a company which French intelligence agents said funneled two hundred thousand dollars to the French secret army organization from nineteen sixty two coup attempt attempt against Charles de Gaulle. Allegedly, both Shaw and Schlumberger Corp. President. John de Menel sat on the board of Permadex. Per Permindex. Garrison's case hinged on proving Shaw used the alias Clay Bertrand, in quotes. In 1964, New Orleans lawyer Dean Andrews told the Warren Commission that on November 23, 1963, one Clay Bertrand asked him to represent Oswald, who had earlier visited Andrews, Andrews' office in the company of some Latin gay kids, in quotes. Along with names of the prominent European fascists, Shaw's address book contained the listing, quote, Lee Odom, P.O. Box, 
19106 Dallas, Texas, end quote. Oswald's address book contained the same P.O. box number with no name attached, but Andrews, who also represented Mafia boss Carlos Mancillo, refused to diverge uh, Bertrand's identity, saying it would be, quote, Bon Voyage Dino, end quote, if he did. In 1977, at least one of Garrison's claims was vindicated when a CIA document surfaced showing that Shaw, a former OSS colonel, had indeed had a long history with the CIA. Wow, wow, wow. Clay Shaw. Clay Shaw. Schlumberger pops up a lot, eh? Wow. Card number 21. Card number 21. Military intelligence. Don't tell me this is. It can't be. No, it's too old. Military intelligence. Who is this? This guy. Who is this guy? It can't be from the Iran Contra. This too early. Let's take a look at the text. No, it's not. General Charles Cable. Let's see if the text is the same. Let's see if the text is the same. Let's see if we can focus this thing. Come on. There we go. So that's good. And is the same. You got the true nature and then Marina Oswald. The true nature of Marina Oswald. So that's the same. We got military intelligence breaking there. Let's see. A heavy military intelligence. So they reworded the sentence a little bit. Ends with Clay Shaw. This thing here, it says soon after certain defeat. Let's see if we can find that. Soon after certain defeat looks like the text is pretty much the same FBI air yeah so we'll read the original okay card number 21 military intelligence let's get this thing focused General Charles Cable General Charles Cable, whose brother Earl was the mayor of Dallas in 1963, was a former Air Force intelligence chief and CIA deputy director under Alan Dulles from 1953 to 1961. After meeting all night before the 1961 invasion of Cuba with E. Har Howard Hunt, David Phillips and others, Campbell phoned President Kennedy at 4 a.m. to ask for U.S. air support for the Bay of Pigs landing. Kennedy's refusal meant sending their proxy army to certain death, defeat. Soon after the failed invasion, Kennedy fired Dulles and Cabal and threatened to, quote, splinter the CIA into a thousand pieces and scatter it to the winds, end quote. That's one of the most well-known quotes of Kennedy, by the way. Okay. My God, how the world would look different if he did that. Let's continue with the reading. Cabal never forgave the president and criticized him publicly and often. On one such occasion in 1962, he was introduced to the foreign Policy Association of New Orleans by Clay Shaw. A heavy military intelligence 
presence pervaded Dallas on November 22nd, 1963. The morning, that morning, FBI agent Jane Hosty met with an armed, unarmed Army intelligence officer, Secret Service agent Winston Lawson, who approved the motorcade route, was a member of Army Intelligence Reserve's Air Deputy Police Chief and Air Officer George Lupkin rode in the motorcade's pilot car. James W. Powell, another Air Officer, was stationed in front of the Dallas School Book Depository and was present when the rifle was found on the sixth floor. The local head of Army Intelligence was oil man Jack Trichton, who recommended the first Russian inter interpreter used by the Soviet service in questioning Maria Oswald. The true nature of Lee Oswald's connection to military intelligence remains obscure because defense intelligence agency files on him were never shown to the Warren Commission and were later routinely in quotes destroyed wow 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 card number 22 okay card number 22 this is fidel castro Fidel Castro look at the missile he's smoking the Cuban question ICBM intercontinental ballistic missile I think look at that artwork man I would pay so much for this. Uh, who has the originals of these? I really want to know this. Do they even exist anymore? This is Fidel Castro. This is Fidel Castro. Oh, we got to look at the text to make sure the text is the same. Let's check it out. Cuba, yeah. So, would not invade the island. The U.S. fair play for Cuba. So let's see this. Invade the island. Meanwhile, the U.S. fair play of Cuba. So it's the same thing. They just put meanwhile there. Or they took out the meanwhile in the revised version. This is the revised version. And then Lyndon Johnson, yeah, Oswald, yeah. And ends with so it looks like the text is the same. So we're gonna read the original. Trudeau's dad, someone saying Elder God. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> Hilarious. Beautiful artwork beautiful artwork look at that look at that look at that look at that fidel castro card number 22 cuba suffered greatly under the kennedy uh, administration a cutoff in diplomatic relations had been followed by the bay of pigs invasion and terrorist acts by CIA supported Cuban exiles. Cuban Premier Fidel Castro knew the CIA was trying to kill him, eventually counting 24 attempts. CIA death devices included poison cigars, exploding seashells, and a toxic, to toxic wetsuit. But the 1962 Cuban Missile Crisis resulted in Kennedy telling Soviet Premier uh, Krush, Krush, uh, Krush, Khrushchev that 
In return for removal of Russian missiles from Cuba, the U.S. would not invade the island. Meanwhile, the U.S. Fair Play for Cuba Committee, FPCC, urged an end to the economic embargo. In the summer of 1963, Kennedy clamped down on CIA exile groups that ignored his order to stop terrorist act, acts against Cuba, and that fall, he made secret diplomatic plans for U.S. and Cuban representatives to meet, leaving Castro little motive to kill him. A month before the assassination, Castro said, quote, I believe Kennedy is sincere. I consider him responsible for everything, but I will say this. In the last analysis, I'm convinced that anyone else would be worse. I'm willing to declare Barry Goldwater, my friend, if it will guarantee Kennedy's re-election, end quote. After Kennedy's death, the agreed-upon secret talks were scrapped by Lyndon Johnson. Oswald's sus suspect, Oswald's suspect, FPCC member membership connected him not to Castro, but to Cuban exile handler Guy Barrist Bannister. CIA reports on Oswald, quote, in quotation marks, in Mexico City, rumors of Oswald's meeting with Cuban agents that circulated after the assassination seemed to link him to Castro, but they originated in the propaganda mills of CIA veterans David Phillips and E. Howard Hunt. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Now it's card number 22. Right. We got two more cards to read, right? Because we read 1 to 12 in the first set right and then we've got 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 right so this is card number 23 okay card number 23 the original the revised version 1990 1992 the art is the same code name bishop who is this who is this code name bishop is that a cigarette in his ear what's going on Is this guy code number bishop david atelli phillips let's check this out let's check the text so the paragraph the first paragraph broken the same was behind it was behind this ends the same the dates seem to be the same second paragraph starts the same ends the same in the last paragraph cool it looks like they're the same so we're going to read the original okay card number 23 david atley phillips david atley phillips a native of the dallas fort worth area was a cia agent specializing in propaganda he was on secret cia assignment in havana until 1960 was mexico city covert action chief from 1961 to 63 during the time of oswald's visit there and oswald should be in quote there and was coordinate coordinator of propaganda for the bay of pigs invasion and for all the cuban exile terrorist groups under the cia umbrella one of these groups alpha 66 founded by Antonio Vecchiana ignored Kennedy's 1963 ban on terrorist terrorist actions against Cuba. Between 1960 and 
Vinciana and his CIA controller of control officer known to him as Maurice Bishop in quotes met more than 100 times their relationship ended with a $253,000 payment from Bishop for past services five months later Vishiana was convicted on drug smuggling he claimed he was set up and suspected that quote Bishop end quote was behind it in 1976 Vishiana told investigators that in September 1963 in Dallas he had been Bishop in quotes he had seen Bishop in quotes talking to a man he later realized was Lee Harvey Oswald Vishiana added that after Kennedy's death Bishop in quotes had asked him to contact his uncle a Cuban intelligence officer working in Mexico City and offer him money to say he was he had met Oswald there in the fall of 1963 Congre congressional investigators realizing that Phillips's career do dovetailed neatly with bishops uh, in quotes arranged a casual meeting between Phillips and Vishiana after they didn't uh, although they didn't identify each other investigators felt the pair was probably lying Phillips who later became CIA Western Hemisphere's chief insisted to his to his death that he had heard CIA surveillance tapes of the real Oswald in Mexico Mexico City but that they had been routinely destroyed and routinely is in quotes David Atlee Phillips Whoop. come back here David Atlee Phillips this dude <laughs> again do not forget do not forget just imagine if we had something like WikiLeaks around back then so free Assange free Assange free Assange Julian Assange is a publisher and journalist that is being crucified for trying to bring transparency and accountability of capital as power to humanity for more information see wikileaks.org defend.wikileaks.org or Julian Assange and WikiLeaks playlist on censor 2 right. CIA and FBI doing exactly the same thing they were doing back then as they are doing to Julian Assange right now card number 24 1990 version 1992 version let's check this out the three traps the three traps who are the three traps three traps the three traps let's check out the text hunt holt harrelson and strongest halt oh Oh, look, the names change. This is the first time we're seeing that the names change. This one says E. Howard Hunt and Frank Sturgis. The name on the card is the same, the three tramps. But on the revised version, the title is different. Hunt Holt. Harrelson and Strogus. Interesting. So we're going to read the revised version because guaranteed it's got to be different. They must have added more information. That starts off the same. This paragraph 
Guy Bannister's office. In the first hours. Okay, this looks to be different. The last paragraph seems to change, but then they add another sentence here. Okay, we're going to read the revised version, especially because the title has changed. So the original title was E. Howard Hunt and Frank Sturgis. And it looks like there's more players added here. All right. So card number 24. get this thing focused hunt hold harrelson and sturgis in the first hours after the assassination dallas police questioned and released many suspects among them three tramps in quotes arrested in a railroad railroad car near the grassy knoll and photographed en route to a police station although former mayor meyer former meyer lansky accountant chucky holt had said he was in fact the oldest looking of the tramps others claim the man is actually watergate burglar and cia agent e howard hunt whose location on November 22nd is officially unknown. Hunt was the political planner for the Bay of Pigs invasion and organizer of the Cuban Revolutionary Council, a government in exile whose New Orleans operations were run out of Guy Bannister's office. It is alleged Hunt was stationed in Mexico City during Oswald's visit there. In 1975, a letter thought to be Oswald's hand, hand surfaced in Mexico. Dated November 8, 1963, it reads, quote, Dear Mr. Hunt, I would like information connecting sick my position. I am asking or concerning sick my position. I am asking only for information. I am asking that we discuss the matter fully before any steps are taken by me or anyone else. Thank you, Lee Harvey Oswald." End quote. Another of the tramps is said to be convicted hitman Charles Harrelson or al alternatively Hunt's fellow Watergate burglar and CIA agent Frank Sturgis aka Frank Fior Fiorini Sturgis had infiltrated Castro's revolution and was named Minister of Games of Chance when Castro came to power in 1959. Within a year, Castro closed the casino and the mafia put a one million dollar contract on him. After unsuccessfully attempting to poison Castro, Sturgis fled to Miami where he joined Hunt and the Cuban exiles. In 1963, he was one of six pilots re reprimanded by Kennedy for continuing to stage terrorist raids against Cuba. Conflicting allegations cloud the identity of the third trap. Incredible. 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 The three traps. The three traps. Wow, wow, wow. Gang, we got 12 more cards that we're going to read in the next live streams of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Look at that. This is absolutely beautiful. Really. We know who that is. And we're going to read it in the next live stream. 
right? So this is our second reading of it. I'm very happy to have gotten both versions. I didn't know there was a revised version that came out, right? In 1992, after Oliver Stone's JFK movie, right? So we'll continue to do these readings the same way. Mash the revised version with the original version to see if there's any differences and hopefully get the most up-to-date information, right? Uh, fantastic, fantastic. And I'll load up each of the individual readings separately as we have uh, in the first 12 as well as the way we did for the drug war trading cards as well, where we loaded up the reading for the full set and then each one individually as well. And we're for sure we'll be reading uh, the rotten to the core trading cards as well as the Iran Contra as well. Uh, for sure, for sure, for sure, right? And before I go back to the live stream, if you want to know what this work is about, I'm going to turn on chat. We're going to turn on cliffhanger, cliffhanger. We're going to turn on the browser. And if you want to know what this work is about, you can follow the work on Patreon, Subscribe Star, and Substack. We are live streaming on twitch we don't all see these live streams 30 minutes 45 minutes before we go live on twitter mines gap vk bitcloud parlor and others we do have a soundcloud page for audio for podcast we will be uploading this live stream to sensor tube to bitchu to rumble and to odyssey okay uh, but if you want to follow everything that we do, you want to be following the work on BitChute, Rumble, Odyssey. That's where we load everything. We don't load everything on SensorTube. Okay. And we do have a Gilded server if you want to join us there uh, for conversation when we're not live streaming and share information. Okay. Uh, and thank you, everyone, for the support, uh, for supporting this work. I hope you're enjoying the content. Uh, what I'm going to do right now is go back to the chat and most likely we'll continue this reading uh, next weekend or within the next couple of weeks anyway. Uh, we're not gonna wait another year to do the next 12 readings. We're gonna get this done and have it out because this is absolutely amazing and very relevant considering that additional information was released a few weeks ago regarding the JFK assassination. And it's become pretty clear now that uh, the CIA, in collaboration with the FBI, assassinated John F. Kennedy. They conducted a coup d'etat in the United States of America. And I'm very curious to find out how people feel about that. 